Hello and welcome to part two of this Paralympic torch cabinet I'm making. I'm going to start by ripping some timber down. This is oak and going through how I prepare the timber ready for jointing panels and actually constructing the first part of the cabinet. So stick with me, grab a coffee or a cup of tea and we'll take this journey together. After cutting them on the table saw, I then cut them on the band saw to thickness. These are about 11-12mm thick and they've been put in to stick here with all these pieces of wood inside to let the air get through them. The pieces of wood are actually inside out on there so that they can the insides can dry and they've also got weight on them to keep them flat, stop them wandering off. So there's the timber, all planed up and with some weight on it, just sitting there ready to uh, do all its moving. Hopefully it won't move much. Uh, I've taken lots of the twist out, uh, there's much less in it now. A little bit of snipe on the end, if you don't know what snipe is, we'll discuss it later. I allow for snipe, which gives me a little off cuts as well. So, planks back in order, so that we can see, you can see some of them have twisted, there's a bit of movement going on there, um, and here you, you can see these two planks here are from each other, they've cut, separated, so they'll go back together, and I'll get some of these, uh, glue these together and get rid of some of these twists and some of this movement. These are the four strips that will make the back panel of the cabinet bit of movement there so I'll glue them together and get rid of that and make it one flat panel. So the tip here is to cramp four pieces together, end of vice as well, cramp either end, make sure they're square together and they can be planed down as one. Use the smoothing plane and the four plane to get them straight and flat so I'm happy with them. So now they're jointed, it's about gluing these panels, these strips together to create panels. And as you can see, they're, they're misshapen a little bit. This is due to uh, movement in the timber. That bit of paper, I just hang the bits of paper over the sash cramp and that, uh, that stops the glue from touching the cramp, which then turns the glue black. So you end up with a black mark on your piece of work, especially oak. So yeah. Get some glue on here. Yes, I use tight bond ultimate, the tight bond three, which is great. And uh, I've got this bad habit of wiping glue onto the end of my bench, but it is useful sometimes. And then I start in the middle of the panel. This is important for me. I start in the middle of the panel, getting the, the joint flush. And then I work my way out both sides down the length of the panel because you can adjust the panel easier that way. And then when you come to the end, you can put a G cramp on the end, which I think you'll see in a minute but yeah it's all about tightening the right cramp up at the right time this one's above which is great above and below is a good habit to do get into one side then the other um, blocks on there to stop marking the edge of the wood and uh, there you go little pads just to stop the uh, wood getting damaged and this is something that you that every now and then happens there isn't enough space in the sash cramp, so I've got to back the sash cramp up a bit, move it down a hole, and then start winding it up again. And every now and then that happens. It's not the end of the world. Coming towards the end of the plank, just checking that they're flush. And it's important that they're flush. Get them as best as I can get them. Just a little tweak there. And there you go, little G cramp, two pads on the end, just to make sure it's flush there. That stops any little bit of movement. And then I found that in the middle, just not far from the, that big sash cramp, there was a little bit out and I just wanted to correct this. 
So out comes a bigger G cramp. Squeeze it together. Loosen the tash cramps when you do this and then tighten them back up again just to give you that movement and then once it's in the right place tighten the sash cramps back up and uh, you can remove the g cam you don't have to leave it there once it's dry we then have to remove the excess glue and i just go over the cabinet scraper just to make sure that if there is a slight step there we remove the slight step clean the glue away gives me a great finish if there's a bit too much glue there, then uh, I grab a chisel and I'll just take the tops off and then go over it with a scraper. I have to go over all the panels, both sides, all the way down to that bit of snipe, which is about 45mm from the end. Then we get on with marking the back panel. So I'm straightening this edge and I'm marking this edge up. And I've got to plane the panel down to that. This is, uh, and this is the bit that I love but hate, which is the first part of planing a sawn plank. And it always makes this ribbly, wobbly, horrible noise because it's just skipping over the high spots or taking off the high spots on a plank. And uh, it's always horrible at first, but then once you start taking smoother cuts and nicer shavings and getting results, it, uh, it all improves. But that first plane over a piece of wood is always lumpy and sounds terrible. So this edge is straightening up and it's getting level. And I'm just checking the dimensions, how far away from the line I am. And what I've found is that far end is a little bit higher than this end near the camera. So I've got to take a few passes off that end to get it lower. And as you saw from the start there, I start near the end and take a cut, and I come back a bit further each pass. So I've probably dropped that end, I don't know, 20 thou, 25 thou, whereas this end it's only lost about a thousandth of an inch. That's nice. And yes, I have to turn it over and do the other side. So we'll skip through this bit and move on to the next. But just before we do that, should we just listen to that noise one more time? Okay, let's skip it. One last pass. And then let's just check for square and see how square I'm doing. My big jointer plane, four plane, has, has not got as much camber on it as a smaller plane. So I do have a few problems sometimes with squaring things up with the bigger plane. And out comes my Preston number 14. And I know this camber so well, and know this plane so well, that I sort out this square edge quite quickly. Just get it uh, in the right place. Look, I'm holding it just behind the knob on the little bridge that goes across the plane. Just to get a lower centre of gravity so that it sits still. Don't forget this board's only about 10 roll thick. So it's uh, you're holding a 2 inch wide plane on a... 50mm wide plane on a on a 10mm wide uh, plank, so it's a little bit iffy. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. And I've got that down to 271. And this is the back panel, that's the bottom. At 271, so I'm happy with that. Let's just have a look. It's just, when the tape message says it's for slightly under, but you know what, that's pretty good. Next, cut it to length and square. That's the first panel done. Then I've got the end, the side panels coming off there at an angle. Yeah, it's weird. So a quick catch up with what's going on. The, um, the cabinet here, I've measured, I've sorted this angle out and this angle is, um, it's pretty relevant. It's, it's one, 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 which is great. So that's, that's quite nice, one, one. 
and this is the plank that's going to do this bottom panel and the top panel up here as well and um, I've made that 120 wide which is what the diameter of the cabinet the case is the tube so I've got I'm trying to provide some relevance between sizes and dimensions as well as interest what we've got here is a book matched piece of wood so can you see how this does this and it does this here well that's because there's a joint there let's see if I can find it you might oh, see there's a joint here somewhere there's a joint about there in the middle and basically that piece of wood is flipped over and I've got so that's why we've got that going on and it just looks great with this pattern going on anyhow I'm um, going to use one of these sides, going to get the angles on here, the 111, and the, the other one. I'm not going to flip it around. I'm not going to do a cut here, and this is the back of one, and that's the back of the other. I'm going to make them both pieces, the back at the back there, so that when you look inside, that piece at the bottom is relevant to that piece at the top. And I think just little tiny details like this make a massive amount of difference to the finished cabinet. So, yeah, got that at 111 made two of those i've got let me show you these are the two side panels that go onto the angles one over there and one over here and the back panel the back panels here hidden away this is cut to size now this is cut to height it's cut to width and i've got these lovely cathedrals showing again book matched so that bit's book matched and this one's book matched that's why there's they're not identical because you're, you're further into the tree. But look, we've got written on here, top face. Great piece of plank of wood that is now. And flat, so flat. And the thickness, approximately 9 mil thick. So that's pretty good. So I don't want this thing to weigh a ton, but it's got to be substantial and strong enough. And So yeah, get in there. So I'll catch you back in a bit. I'll cut those and then we'll come back on. So here are the top and bottom, and they're flush there, and I've got them flush at the back, and I haven't, um, that's because they were bang on 120 mil. Um, and I've put the two together, and they're clamped together, so that I can plane this off in one go. These two will be exploded, as in that one will go that way, this one will come this way, and these planes, these angles will be exactly the same for that piece to go in there and this piece to go on here. So it just makes it easier. I've copied the, I've transferred the line across from there and there. So now I'm just going to put it in the vise and this is what I want to show you really, the fact that I can now put that in the vise like that and um, not easy one-handed. And I can play in this off. I'll put it a bit more level for me to make it. This is a, a thing that I like doing, and everybody really should think about how they're planing pieces. I like that surface to be level with the bench, so you get used to planing level. So that can be tightened up now. And if I move it anywhere, it will have two clamps on it all the time. Just makes it easier. So bottom, top, sides. And now I've just got to bevel this off. So I've, I've marked it. Let me show you. I've set up that angle finder um, to, it was 111. So I've set up to 55 and a half degrees. Then I've set up my little sliding bevel to 50, 55 and a half degree. Put that on there, mark that. And I've gone along here with with a fine marker pen, I've bought these a while ago. Um, really useful, different sizes. Um, as you can see, lots of different sizes, they're great. So I've marked straight down there, it gives me a nice clear line I can see. I'm not using a marking gauge, don't want a groove there, just want a nice marker line. And you can see actually that I've used it before just there. But uh, it's great, it, it really does a good job of making it clear so that I can see exactly where I've got a plane to. And now I've got to put this 55 degrees on. And you could say, why aren't I using that? Well, I'm not using that because it would be so close to the fence that I can't control it. So 
Yeah, it's one of those things where I've got to do it by hand again.